These are gaming's most ridiculous myths, or are they? Today we're gonna find out if they're busted or if they're true. So let's start out with a myth from Apex. Okay, starting off with a Apex myth, I should know this one pretty easily. Do you move faster when crouching and healing on Revenant? I've always said yes. You know, it makes sense that it would be yes, because you do go faster when you hold crouch. Than you do while walking healing. This is actually false. You move what? the same speed as you'd normally would if you were walking healing. So why- That doesn't sound right. I refuse- th that always looks faster. Maybe I'm- maybe I'm smoking something. actually false. You move is that not slightly faster? Healing. Am I crazy? Uh, yes, you move faster than other legends while crouching and healing, but for Rev, this isn't faster than walking. But for Rev, it isn't faster than walking, okay. It seem as if you are moving faster simply because you are lower to the ground, changing your perceived perspective of your speed. Alright, I mean, if he says so. So I guess we got the first one wrong. Uh, let's see how many we're actually gonna get right. Quick switching your weapon reloads it faster. Now, quick switching is something many of us do when you're, for example, using an op and you reload, you switch your weapon, and then... Oh, I do this in Apex and stuff all the time. I don't know about the encounter strike, but it definitely is faster in Apex. We counted it. Then shoot. Instead of just shooting, letting it scope back in, and then shooting again. Basically... I mean, I'm gonna say it makes sense, it's faster just to do the way you're doing it now, right? Like, the natural way. I feel like a lot of people, especially in Counter-Strike, you just have these weird ticks that you do, because you want to see the cool knives spinning around and everything. Uh, it's something that pros might be doing, but I never really did that for the sake of actually doing it faster. You're switching your gun. Now, this myth is busted because it does not go faster to quick switch to reload actually it might take you longer time you can see here it I might take you longer time to to quick switch the oh that's crazy and here you can see when i'm scoping down and shooting versus quick switching between every shot it actually takes me much longer to get the shots off while quick switching oh, wow yeah, but by quick switching, you lose 0.08 milliseconds. I like having the proof on the screen. It helps me a lot because I have trust issues. Sky's All right, some Sky's dog can break Sage's wall. Sky's dog can break Sage's wall. Not seeing any... I assume that the dog deals damage, so people feel like the damage against it. Because I know you can shoot Sage's wall and it eventually breaks, right? So some people think that, oh yeah, maybe the dog would break it. But obviously, it can't. Any sort of damage here. Oh, that's busted. Good to know. Myth number four, you can silent jump. Well, you can see when I'm jumping up on, for example, this car, it basically makes no sound for me. Same when I'm jumping up on the mid box in Dust 2, I can't really hear anything. But when Rav does it, as you can hear, I can really hear every jump on the car and on the mid box. So you can't really silent jump because any jump makes a sound. I've never heard of a silent jump, but okay. I mean, maybe it's something I haven't heard of. I haven't played too much Counter Strike lately. When I'm jumping up on the mid box in Dust 2, I can't really hear anything. But okay, so then, then that sounds like there's not going to be any sound, right? That makes a lot of sense. But when Rav does it, as you can hear, I can really hear every jump on the car and on the mid box. So you can't really silent jump because any jump. I mean, honest, I can't. I can't actually hear him, but I'll take an anomaly's word for it. The sound, maybe not for the player, but definitely for other people around. Falling, however, can be completely silent. But that's beside the point. The myth is busted. That's interesting because there's a lot of games that have that where you know it makes a sound on the player's end, but it does or it does doesn't make us, you know, sound on the enemy's end or the other way around. I'm not sure why that does happen, but it's super common and it leads to weird situations like this where you misunderstand how the game works completely. You can just run through Iana's hologram. Okay, you can run through Iana's holograms. Which makes if it's a hologram, like in Apex, I think you can run through Mirage's clones, right? So it makes sense you can run through a hologram. This it is a hologram. because it's a hologram. Nope. Or oh. not. Okay, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Busted. Does not I mean, normally you wouldn't really find out because you would be shooting them beforehand, I think, but... What do I know? You can throw grenades while diffusing. I've seen people throw like a gr flashbang or smoke and then diffuse. I've never seen them throw it while diffusing because it doesn't make sense. But would you do that? All right. So I'm going to say no because you're interactive with something. It ties up your hands. So you can't do anything. Or throwing a grenade or diffusing at the same time or hitting the like button on the video. You know, I don't know. This, I don't think it's going to be a... I don't think it's going to work. Let's see now. Grenades while diffusing. Now, while you're diffusing, you might think you can only right click grenades because if you press left click, nothing happens. What you can do is you can diffuse, hold right click, then press left click, let go of right click, and then Wait, a left click. So you can make any type of grenade throw. You can make a right click. Oh, and left -click. so you could just straight up right click as well. Okay, never mind.
Spectre running gun Spectre is better than gun standing is still. It's actually more accurate than standing still and shooting. And now this is running gun. I'm gonna say no. No, no, I'm gonna say yes because yet I know her. She throws the darts, and those are accurate. So it makes sense that this guy might have something in for that as well. Standing still and shooting. And now this is run and gun. Oh. As you can see with run and Pretty gun, run. I was able to get way more kills. So obviously Wait, what? myth true. Did he not get more myths than standing still? Back to run and gun is actually more what? accurate than standing still and shooting. He's getting. And now this is run and gun. As you can see. Uh, what? He's. Nah, that's a bait. That's a bait. It's a Chonko wearing nothing but a cloth hidden on the map stadium. Ooh, dude, dude, we gotta find this. We gotta see this. All right, is there? I don't know if I want to find this one. I'm pretty sure it's this hole. All right, I'm coming. And Chonka. Oh, Whoa. okay. I thought you meant like a cloth cloth. <laughs> Confirmed. Yeah, he's he's disappointed. You can't fool me. Cloth. I saw those eyes. You wanted it to be true so bad. We're both disappointed. Myth, you can live in ring three when you are taking 10 damage per tick. Everyone usually understands that. Everyone who's played Apex ranked, especially the lifelines, know there's a way to survive for that long. But uh, let's see where he's going with it. One and two are fair game. You can play in them and around them, but when it comes to that third ring, it's the real deal and you are gonna die quite quickly. However, yes, you can actually outlive in there ring it is. three, but you are gonna need a lot of med kits. You can take- There it is. Yeah, go craft those med kits, keep healing, don't play the game, and you can stay in the ring for as long as you damage. want. And that's how your mom and I got predator. You can always kill a player with slice, slice, stab. That should always kill someone, as far as I know. Let's check it out. Well, most of you know, if you play a knife round or you're just gonna knife someone, if you hit a slice, a slice, and then a stab, the enemy always dies. What most people don't know is if you miss the first slice, the slice, slice combo that comes after only deals what? seven damage. That's crazy. What are these weird interactions? I could not guess that. And what? This is why you should never slice in the air randomly if you're planning to knife someone. That explains why I've lost so many knife rounds. That's crazy. Okay. Nothing stops the nuke. Nah, it's kind of the point of it. Yeah. It'd be kind of funny if this random little box on the ground did stop the nuke. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah. So all right, let's see. I don't really. I assume that the nuke is like it's like a game-winning thing, so it doesn't really matter whether you're near a comm scrambler. As you can see, it seems to block all the abilities you can't actually use. But uh, who knows? You know, who knows? Let's check it out. Time. Here we go. Oh, I cannot oh, call a nuke yet. That's cool. That's wow. pretty cool, actually. Wow. wow. Molotovs and incendiaries deal constant damage. Ooh. Molotovs and incendiaries deal constant damage. Well, as you can see by this side-by-side -side comparison, when the Molotov has been on the ground for a longer while, it deals sign- Okay, so the, the, the thing is whether the Molotov will deal the same amount of damage when it's fresh versus later on. I want to say yes, because that's how most games do it, because it's just confusing as a player. Let's see. Significant more damage, even though I'm in the fire for the same amount of time. So it that is interesting. That is something like you would really need to know if you were a Counter-Strike player before you ran straight into a fire and died. Of the Molotov or incendiary, they deal low damage and you can easily run through it. But once it's been on fire for a while, it's going to deal a lot more damage. Wait, it's the opposite? It deals less damage at the start and more at the end? Okay, that I wasn't even expecting that. I'm not gonna lie. Frag grenades can physically move or displace enemies. True. I know this one. True. This is absolutely true, but the circumstances- Because this happens to me all the time. <laughs> it happens all the time. The grenades, if they crack you, or if you are health, like health health, I think it actually knocks you farther away. And obviously the closer you are to the grenade, the more it will launch you away. But let's see what he has to say. This is where it can be done are very specific. Frags are incredible at forcing openings and they gain a ton of value at end game when enemy players simply just cannot avoid them as easily. Also, if you need to have someone get physically ejected from a roof or height, a vert need is incredible for this. Enemies will not always get moved from frags though. And the key thing to know is that players will only move if they do take health damage. There it we can go. literally be a full Call 100 it. hit, say 99 to Call shields it. and one to health damage. And this 
will result in the enemy getting sent flying. Second thing to know is that they will get displaced based on the amount of damage done and or the distance to the frag grenade. So a 30 damage hit that touches health might only slightly shake an enemy where that full Seeing as it is source code, I'm gonna say it also has something to do with them, the, the amount of movement speed you have going into the grenade, as I mentioned previously, but I could be wrong. So that's really good to know. And those were a bunch of myths, and I, I am surprised to say that I did not do very well. <laughs> I tried to approach him with my facts and logic, and clearly it was faulty. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like, subscribe, check out this video on the screen. It's a banger, I promise. And I'll see you all next time. Peace out.